Welcome to lesson 6.3. This is on solving equations involving integers now. now. We've already used integer tiles before to add and subtract, so you should have no difficulty making this change, hopefully. Okay. Um, you should remember that when we talk about integers, we have positive and negative tiles. The positive tile or the positive one is represented by an open clear tile right here. So that equals positive one. And a negative one is represented by a shaded in black tile like that. So just to go over some of the integer stuff with you, uh, if I give you the question positive 2 plus positive 1, this is what you would do. You would take and draw the positive 2 right here, and then you would draw the positive 1, and then you'd figure out how many there was all together. Now, in this case, nope, there's no canceling here because they're all positive. If I gave you negative 2 plus negative 3, you draw the negative 2, the negative 3, and then you try to figure out what was left over when you put them all together if there was any canceling, but these being all negatives, there's no canceling, so we have negative 5. So when you add tiles that have the same sign, remember, you just count the number of tiles that are there. This is different when we have positive and negatives. Positive 2 plus positive 3, if you remember, I've got sorry, negative 2 plus positive 3. Negative 2, you draw the negative 2, and then you take and add sorry, positive 3. But you would have noticed that when you did this, that a pair of them here and here would both form zeros. Remember, one negative and one positive make a zero. That means that those would cancel, becoming zero, and then what you have left over is your answer. Now, I realize I'm going fast, but I expect you to know this. You should, I should be reviewing. Okay, so we're going to be using positive tiles and negative tiles to use uh, to solve equations. So we're going to have to change a little bit of what we're doing, and uh, I'll get to that in a moment. But there's one concept you have to understand which makes it very, which is very important. This is the concept that a negative 5 and a subtract 5 are the same thing. This is something that's very, uh, it's very important for you to understand because if you don't understand it, later on it's going to cause difficulty. So you may be asking me, well, how can negative 5 and a subtract 5 be the same thing? Well, if I took and added 6 to this negative 5, when we did 6 minus 5, I don't know if you remember this, what answers do you get here? Well, a 6 and a negative 5 gives us positive 1. And 6 take away 5 is a positive 1. You'll notice here that I started with a, an, a, a negative 5 being added and a negative 5, uh, sorry, a number being subtracted. This here number was the same in both, wasn't it? So the fact is that a negative 5 and a subtract 5 are the same thing, okay? If I add a negative 5 to something, I get positive 1. If I subtract 5, I get a positive 1. They're the same number. So this proves to you that subtract 5 and negative 5 are the same thing. So how does that apply? Well, if you go back up here, when we're doing this equation, you'll notice that there is a negative 2 right here. That negative 2 is a subtract 2. Okay. So when I put the negative 2 here and I moved it over to here, um, it still becomes a negative 2 or a subtract 2. A negative 2 and a positive 1, these still make 0. And when I'm drawing tiles, if you ever see a subtract 2, you're going to put down a negative, two, a negative tile, a negative 2 tiles. Okay, so let's take a look at our equation. x take away 5, or x negative 5 equals 4. On the pan balance, we have a hard time showing 5 that's been removed from the variable, so we're going to use a negative integer tile. Now, what does that look like? Well, the x doesn't change the x is going to stay the same way. So on my, my, on my tiles, I'm going to put down a negative, sorry, an x, just like we did before with the box. Here's my x. Okay. Now I'm going to add to that negative 5. So adding a negative 5 here, here's my negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 5. On the right-hand side, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see that I've got x, negative 5, and 4, or x take away 5 is equal to 4. That's the first thing you need to do when you encounter an equation with subtraction in it, is you have to draw it. So there it's been drawn. If you turn the page, the next step is I've got to get the x tile, take that x right there, and my negative 4, I wonder if I can do this thing, 2, 3, 4, okay, and I guess there's five there. 
And on the right hand side, I had four. And I need to get rid of the negative five. Now what we're going to do to get rid of it is I'm going to make it turn into zero. To make it turn into zero, I'm going to add positive five to it. So this is a positive five there. That makes that zero. All right. See how I'm adding one positive with each negative. Now that's going to make the positive here, this is also another positive, it's going to make all of these turn into zeros. Okay, but remember our rule, whatever you do to the left hand side, you must do to the right hand side. So I added 5 on the left, I have to add 5 on the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what's this going to look like? Well, this is going to become 0. It's gone. That's how you show the 0 principle taking place. Okay, the 0 principle is applied, that means that all the positives and all the negatives are now gone. On my right, left hand side, I have my x by itself. But on the right hand side, I still have all of my tiles that I just had a minute ago. And there are nine of them. So x is equal to nine. All right, and then you could probably put that down here. Okay. Note that we could have solved this by inspection. But I want you to learn to use the integers because later on we're going to have positive and negative integers, positive and negative decimals, and positive and negative fractions. So you have to know the steps. So here we go. Here's our next example. Negative 4 is equal to a number increased by 5. So on the left hand side I need to create this. So let's have you try the creation first. Create the equation using tiles. Model this using tiles. So pause the recording and do that. All right, so negative 4. One, two, there we go. One, two, three, four. There's my negative four. I still have my x, that hasn't changed. And I have five. So here's five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Four, five. Okay? And I need now to get the x by itself. To get the x by itself, I have to get rid of the tiles that are with the x. Now the ones that are with the x are the positive 5 here. So this positive 5 has got to have a matching set of negatives that will make it disappear. So I have to get rid of that by adding negative 5 to it. So what does that look like? Well, over on this side I still have my negative 5 that I, sorry, my negative 4 that I started with. So I'll put them here, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. I have my x over here, nothing's changed there. And I have my negative 5. Five. Sorry, here we are. My, my negative five. My positive five. All right. And now I need to put with these negatives to make them go away. Whatever I do to the left-hand side, or the right. Sorry. Whatever I do to the right-hand side, I have to do to the left. Now I added five to the left. Before I get the left and right, I added five on the right. I've got to add five on the other side. Now, what does that do to the right-hand side? Well, this all goes to be a zero. So they basically go away, leaving me with my x isolated by itself. Over on the right, left-hand side, the other side over here, I now have a total of all black tiles. So here, I've got nothing but nine black tiles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiles there. So I've got nine on the left x on the right, so that means that my answer, x is equal to negative 9. Okay? So what do they do here? Well, let's go back and take a look. I had to model the equation. So if you successfully do the tiles, negative 4 on the left, x plus 5 on the right. Now you have to show me that you know how to get rid of them. So did you place the positives with this and the negatives make zero principle. Next, did you zero principle it out properly and simplify it? And did you tell me what the answer was? There's your solution written for you. Okay, going on to the next equation. Three less than a number is two. Now, I probably shouldn't have given you the equation. I probably should have made you 
figure it out, but I didn't. So there's three less than the number. Remember, if I want less than something, I've got to be taking three from it. So that means that the number is first, and then I'm going to take three from it. So I'd like you to model that equation using tiles, please. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so we've got x. Nothing's changed there. And I've got to take away three. Remember, taking away three, subtracting three is the same as three negatives. On the right-hand side, I have two. So there is, okay, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. I need two. There we go. Okay, so I've got x minus 3 is equal to 2. Now, I need the x to be alone. So in order to get the x by itself, I need to get rid of these ones right here. These have to go away. So to get rid of them, I need to create a 0 with them. So if I want to create a 0, I need three positives to go with it. The x doesn't change. It stays where it is. And I'll shut that off. There we go. So I have my three negatives. They haven't changed. They're still there. But I'm going to put three positives with them. On the right-hand side, I had two positives already. If I add three positives to the left side, I add three positives to the right side. Okay? Now, what does that do? Well, if I added the three, that means that these things here, those ones there, the three negatives and three positives, are going to become zero. They disappear. So when I simplify things, I now only have an x there. Right? Now, that x is gone. And then over here, I still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So things are simple. Simpler. That means the left side becomes the x. Oops, sorry. That's not going to work. There we go. And the right side becomes positive 5. So my answer, x is equal to positive 5. x is equal to 5. So over here I have x, and over here I had the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oops, lost my... keep overlapping when I put them down. I don't like that. There we go. Okay, now, pay close attention to this question, because this is one that's modeled in one of your assignment questions. So you'll see this coming up. Overnight, the temperature dropped 8 degrees. Now, if something drops 8 degrees, it means it goes down by 8 degrees. Going down or dropping is negative. Okay? So, if temperature starts at T, goes down by negative 8, or goes down by negative 8, and then it's left at negative 30. Now, you're not going to be able to draw tiles on this one, are you? I mean, you could, I suppose, but it's going to be difficult. Okay? Now, I'm just going to pause for a second. Okay. I'm back. So I've got T on the left-hand side, so uh, this gives me a minimizer. I've got a T. I'll put that inside my box, just like a variable X. I have negative 8, so I'm going to represent this by a negative 8 this time. And on the right-hand side, I have 30. I'm going to put that in its own box. Now, the reason I'm using boxes this time is that 30 is too many to draw. Okay, when it's short and small numbers or little numbers, you can draw them, but this one here is a little bit easier to work with. So let's take a look at what happens here. I need to get rid of negative 8. Now, if you visualize this in your head as being 8 negative tiles, you need to put 8 positive tiles with it. So I'm going to have my T, I'm going to have my negative 8, and I'm going to put with them positive 8. Now, this negative 8 and positive 8, if you imagine them being tiles, Eight negatives and eight positives cancel each other out. Over on the right-hand side, I have a 30, and I'm going to put with that a positive 8. Now, when we simplify things, the negative 8 and the positive 8 go away. Okay, That leaves you with a T all by itself. If you think back here for a second, the 30 and the positive 8, when you put them together, that gives you 38. This is a little bit easier. You don't have to necessarily draw the tiles for this one. Okay. Now, remember to read your instructions because um, if you're in any doubt, ask me. But if in your, in your textbook it says draw the tiles, make sure you draw it. If there's 38 to draw and they say draw them, unfortunately, you have to. Okay, here's one that has negatives on both sides. So let's take a look. Solve the equation negative 4 is equal to x plus negative 3. Now, remember, you have to keep what's on left on the left, what's on the right on the right. You can't start swapping things around, okay? 
So, first thing, I want you to model that. Pause the recording and model it. Okay, negative four, straightforward. One, two, three, four. I've got an X, not a big deal. And I have also got on this side negative three. All right, so there's my equation that you should have balanced it. Or sorry, I've drawn it first. If you did it correctly, ka -ching. Now, let's use the zero principle to get the X alone. I got negative eight, sorry, negative three here. I need to get that by to go to zero. So I'm going to take that negative three and I'm going to add a positive three to both sides to make it all disappear. So over here, I still have negative four. On this side, I have negative three. I'm going to be placing positive three with it. I still have my x tile. Nothing's changed there. Okay, but I did positive three on the left. So now, in order to make sure things stay balanced, I've got to put positive three on the right. So now we're going to do some canceling. Zero principle in action. These three right there, positives and negatives all match up. They're gone. These three over here, positive and negatives all match up. They're gone. Okay, so if I'm marking, marking this, I'm going to be marking, did you put positive 3 at both sides? Or did you zero principal it? So this would be worth two marks. Simplify. Get rid of what's not supposed to be there. Draw what's left. On the left-hand side, lonely negative 1. Over on the right-hand side, now that the positives and the negatives are gone, you have your x. So x is equal to negative 1. All right. If you have any questions, go back over the examples or come talk to me and uh, good luck on your assignment.